Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. Let's talk about shepherds. Now the duty of shepherds was to basically was to keep their flock intact, uh, protect it from predators. Uh, he provided for them in, a, in terms of nourishment and rest. He guided them, he directed them, he led the way. He was intimately involved with the flock and he was concerned for the safety of each one. He was willing to sacrifice his own comfort, uh, even his own life, for the sake of his sheep. Shepherds were the first people to see uh, the baby Jesus, the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd, uh, our shepherd. Our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, was first seen by shepherds. Jesus is described as being directly descended from David, himself a shepherd, in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. So, King David was a shepherd. Bear this in mind as we go forward, because uh, uh, David will be coming back. I'd like to direct your attention to the 34th chapter of Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel 34. It was likely after the arrival of the news that Jerusalem was conquered that the prophet Ezekiel was commissioned to speak of the tyranny and the carelessness of the governors and teachers and to point out their negligence as a principal cause of their unwillingness to uh, listen to God and the wickedness of the people. The people suffered for the faults of the shepherds. But mercy, I believe, urged the prophet to declare from God that he would judge between them, he would save the flock, and he'd set up one shepherd over them who should uh, feed them, even his servant, David. David. Under the rule of our Lord Jesus Christ. So looking at Ezekiel 34, prophesy against Israel's shepherds, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. 
prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you yourselves with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them, and they were scattered, because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For, the, for thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. The Abrahamic covenant anticipates Israel continuing eternally as a nation and possessing the land forever. Forever. The possession of the land is limited by the continuance of the earth itself and it terminates with the destruction of the heavens and the earth at the end of the millennium. 
The force of the Hebrew, however, is that Israel will continue to possess the land perpetually, that is, until eternity begins. You know, the assertion of amillennialism or amillennialists that the Davidic throne is, well, simply a reference to God's throne in heaven is not supported by either the Old or the New Testament prophecies relating to the future of Israel. Of the 59 references to David in the New Testament, there is not one connecting the Davidic throne with the present spiritual kingdom of God and of Christ, except by spiritualizing many prophecies, both in the Old and the New Testaments. It is a fact that God has declared that Israel is not to cease from being a nation before Him forever. It is also a fact that the Jewish nation, still in unbelief, will retain its national identity forever. It is a fact that the posterity of Abraham has never yet fully possessed and enjoyed the whole of the land so granted. and that no son of David occupies David's throne. The Old Testament promises are as certain of fulfillment to Israel as are the New Testament promises certain of fulfillment to us, the church. A study of the Old and the New Testament therefore seems to confirm Israel's continuity of this co co continued uh, nation, uh, that it will continue, their regathering and restoration to their ancient land, their enjoyment of a kingdom in which Christ will reign over them. David, resurrected from the dead, will share this position of authority as a prince under the rule of Christ during the millennium. David is coming back. The future program of Israel in, in relation to the kingdom is something that should interest every one of us. We don't have to be Jews for that to be of interest on, on the basis of prophecy which has already been fulfilled and prophecies which can be expected to be fulfilled in the future. A broad future program for Israel can be established in the Bible. This anticipates that the regathering of Israel begun in the 20th century will be continued into the 21st since the rapture of the church is pre-tribulational, at least that's the position of this ministry. Israel's program will unfold immediately after the church is raptured. With the realignment of nations after the rapture, Israel will enter into a covenant with the Antichrist, the beast system of Revelation, spoken of in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, among other places. A covenant will be signed for a period of seven years, which will be the last seven years of Daniel's 490 years allotted to Israel. During the first half of this seven years, Israel will enjoy a measure of peace and prosperity. No need for, for the IDF. Orthodox Jews will revive their ancient sacrifices. A temple will be provided. After three and one half years, the covenant will be abruptly broken in keeping with the predictions of both the Old and the New Testaments and especially the words of Christ in Matthew chapter 24. And a period of great trouble, which Jeremiah refers to as the time of Jacob's trouble, will follow. Israel will be persecuted, and their only hope will be to escape their enemies by hiding. 
That's in the second half. There will be no reason or purpose for the IDF. The period of great tribulation will feature not only a time of trouble for Israel, but will be a period in which divine wrath is expressed on all the earth. Great judgments will take place, including warfare, earthquakes, famines, uh, stars falling from heaven. According to the book of Revelation, the majority of the earth's population will be destroyed in these catastrophic judgments. A major world war brings the period to a close. As Christ returns from heaven, He des descends to the uh, Mount of Olives and He delivers His persecuted people. The precise situation is described in Zechariah chapter 14 and Revelation 19 and is uh, confirmed in Romans chapter 11. With the destruction of the enemies of Christ and the establishment of the Millennial Kingdom, the process of Israel's regathering and restoration will be completed. According to Ezekiel chapter 20, regathered Israel will be judged and unbelievers will be purged out. Only those who are Christ's are allowed to enter into the kingdom age. These are brought back to their ancient land and possess the area from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Over this land, Christ will rule as He rules over the entire world. David, who is raised from the dead, along with Old Testament saints, has a big part in the government of the people of Israel. This will also be shared by the twelve apostles whom Christ assured participation in His government of Israel in the millennial age, the kingdom age. Now I watch, as most of you do, what's going on in Israel today. It's beyond interesting to me that when David is old and bedridden, Adonijah, his eldest surviving son and natural heir, declares himself king, but David crowns Bathsheba's son Solomon as king instead. And David dies at the, uh, at the age of 70 after reigning for 40 years. And on his deathbed, he counsels Solomon to walk in the ways of God and and to take revenge on his enemies. Okay? You might find that interesting given what's going on in the Middle East today. During that thousand year reign of Christ, the remnant uh, nation Israel surviving the Great Tribulation will greatly increase as will the Gentile nations and the and and repopulate the earth and rebuild their cities. At the end of the millennial reign of Christ, Satan is loosed for uh, a, a short period uh, and divine judgment overtakes any born in the millennium who rebels against Christ, who are uh, Jewish and Gentile unbelievers. And though all the details are are not supplied, it seems clear that the saints living on earth at the end of the millennium will be translated into their eternal state. The new heaven and the new earth will be created. The heavenly city, uh, the new Jerusalem, uh, which we uh, inhabited for that one, 1,007 years, will descend and rest upon the new earth where it will remain forever. Uh, that Israel, is, uh, as well as Gentile saints of all ages, uh, will be included. It's inter interesting to note, however, that the people of Israel retain their identity as Israelites, even as the Gentiles 
retain their identity as Gentiles in the eternal state. Though there are distinctions depending on their backgrounds, all alike enjoy the presence of the King, the King of Kings, and the countless blessings that belong or to or are associated with the eternal state. The future of Israel is the fulfillment of a divine purpose sovereignly conceived in which the children of Israel constitute one of the major vehicles of divine revelation. It was through them that God gave the scriptures and it was through them that God has illustrated many of his, his attributes, especially those of his faithfulness, his love, and his righteousness. What interests me tremendously, dearly beloved, is how the spirit of a true shepherd of God's people manifests itself in our present age. And, and, and of course, the answer to that is, well, how does it do that? Well, it's the same as it always has and always will. Now I'm going to put this chart on the screen. Uh, it took me a while to uh, to not come up with a name for this chart. I don't I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, Shepherd timeline. Uh, you know, uh, if you notice along this ch this chart here, you'll see that I've divided or I've broken up in segments. Uh, these uh, periods of time in which we're looking at uh, shepherds. Uh, it sort of gives you an idea of, of how this whole concept of shepherding has, has gone all the way through both Testaments, Old Testament, New Testament, all the way through basically from the beginning of Israel uh, to the, now you could say the at, from the beginning of the, at the garden, but uh, more specifically, the beginning of Israel, Israel's shepherds, which in, included uh, uh, King David as a young boy, he was a shepherd, uh, in, right into the, to the, to the present period and into the future. Uh, those of you who are interested I uh, just I would recommend you uh, download this chart, save this chart, take a screenshot, just look it over. I think you'll find it very interesting. There is a tremendous importance or emphasis placed on the shepherding of God's people is, is what I see. Uh, I can't help but see that as we go through both Testaments, Old and New Testaments. It is a, uh, a privileged responsibility. It is also a, a very, I guess you, you might say, a strenuous responsibility. I wouldn't by any means call it an easy responsibility. We're talking about protecting feeding, sheltering, guiding, directing, comforting, everything that's involved in God's, of God's sheep, God's people. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, we had the, we've got Old Testament Israel, uh, the shepherd King David, at Christ's first coming, we've got the, well, it was shepherds who first saw the Christ child, and we're looking at the great shepherd during that period. We're looking at the church age then, where that there are church shepherds, those who shepherd God's people. Uh, I guess during the tribulation period, on the, according to the chart that you're looking at, according to the tribulation period, I, uh, which I marked in red there, I you don't see much of the shepherding of God's people, except uh, I guess I suppose one could argue that the the two witnesses are, uh, would qualify as being shepherds, as well as, as those others who lead others to, 
to Christ during that period. You've got the kingdom age where you, we now have the resurrected King David uh, under Christ's rule, and which doesn't end at the end of the thousand years, but continues on into eternity, uh, into the eternal state. So God is shepherding his people all the way through, and we just happen to be living at a time in which there's some application to us, especially those who are teaching and preaching the Word of God. And... Uh, leading others, we're either going to lead them to green pastures or we're going to lead them to dry ground. It's, that's just pretty much the gist of it. According to the uh, biblical narrative, King David was 30 when he became king in, in 1010 BC. Uh, this means that King David was born sometime near 1040 BC and, and died at 70 in the year 970 B.C. And what's interesting to me about that is, is King David's death appears to mark the midpoint of the 6,000 years. Because if you, if you do a little simple math here, 970 uh, plus t our present year, 2023, that's 2993, plus the seven years tribulation is 3,000 years. Okay? So he does stand in the middle, King David. Now, of course, that's, that only remains true as long as, as, long as we are correct in, in assuming that, that our Lord's return is so very near, which I believe it is. Uh, 970 uh, plus 3,000 equals 3970 B.C. So that kind of gives you the idea of a general, at least a general possibility of a creation year. Uh, that's just simple math. It's not real complicated, but it does, it does really show you that King David is a remarkable figure in all of this. So let's close with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, grant us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mouth to speak, the love and the grace that you continue to show us. Uh, your people love everlasting. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Uh, rest in Him. We love you. We truly do. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.